People of Reddit, what's the stupidest rule your school made? Boys weren't allowed to walk around with their hands in their pockets. A teacher actually asked me, are you enjoying yourself? To get me to take my hands out. Ew, ew, that's really creepy. Using toilet need toilet pass is one of the stupidest for me. Yeah, I never understood why you needed like a toilet pass or hall pass just to go to the bathroom. It, it's weird. We weren't allowed to have zip up hoodies because they could conceal a bomb. I mean, like, good on the school for being safe, but also they're crazy. I went to a school with strict uniform, and it's ridiculous how much they care more about the image of the school compared to the education we get. It is a little bizarre the strange change that education has had, where instead of actually caring about the education, it's more focused on public image and how much funding they can get. Not the whole school, but my third grade teacher had a classroom rule against using the word easy, because it might make other people feel bad if they didn't think whatever you were talking about was easy. Synonyms such as simple were off limits too, so you couldn't skirt the rule that way. I can see why it's an annoying rule, but at the same time, I appreciate the teacher for trying to keep everything inclusive. My parents made me go to a public school in sixth grade. The weirdest rule to me was that we all had to stop everything and stand up every time an adult entered the classroom. If I went to that school, I'd be praying every day an adult walked into the class so I wouldn't have to do anything. So when I was a freshman in high school, they had this rule that if we got caught on our phones in class, our teachers was allowed to hold on to them until the next following Thursday. That's actually ridiculous. If it was till the end of the day, that makes sense. But holding it on to, like, say you do something on Friday, they hold your phone for, like, an entire week? We got made to wear clip-on ties rather than traditional ones. My neck has never recovered from the metal rubbing on it. Nail polish wasn't allowed, and if you were caught wearing nail polish, they'd send you to the supervisor's office to remove it. I'll never understand why nail polish is such a problem in schools or even businesses. It's like, can't can a guy just look cute once? All the students are only allowed to wear or have things with these five colors. Black, white, brown, blue, and gray. And our school uniform has red line on it. Please tell me you were getting, like, dress coded because of the red line. That would be so funny. What's the longest thing you can recite by memory? I could theoretically count until I die. Prove it. You won't. You're right. I don't think they will. The Jabberwocky. Same. It's just a fun poem to say out loud. Most of the words are nonsense, but they all still fit and work. The preamble to the Constitution. As an American citizen, I can proudly say I don't know anything that's in the Constitution. The Princess Bride. The whole thing. Inconceivable! My bank account number. Prove it. I bet you can't also recite your routing number, SSN, and full name slash date of birth at the same time. Yeah, that'd be a lot of things to say all at the same time. That'd just sound like... The lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire. Oh, if we're thinking about song lyrics, then I could probably recite uh, NSP's If We Were Gay all from the top of my head. <laughs> Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. That scene in Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, right before Anakin and Obi-Wan duel. Children's story, Slick Rick. My grandmother got me a Rap Tracks 2 cassette for my birthday when I was a little kid, and I thought this was the coolest song. It still is. Knock him out, Rick. I know every line in Coming to America and Lean on Me. What is humanity's worst invention? Uh, money. Money is a big one, I think, because it's not real. Push ads with tiny clothes cross. You will inevitably click on the stupid ad, which will redirect you to some page while in trying to close the ad. You know, I've been using Duolingo a lot, and oh my god, their ads do that so much, it's really annoying. Leaded gasoline or PFAS chemicals are two that jumped immediately to the front of my mind. I know there are some other really nasty ones, but they never got widespread. I'd say biological slash chemical weapons. Really just weapons in general aren't the best to have been made. Has to be TikTok. I see where you're getting at, but also, in the grand scheme, not really. Social media. I do often wonder of the upsides and drawbacks of social media because it does connect everybody around the world, but it's also making us dumber. The Red Delicious Apple. Alright, I'm gonna sound stupid again, but we invented Red Delicious? Did we not just find it? War. Yeah, that's another big one that we really shouldn't have done. Politics. The internet. Again, it's like social media. There are a lot of good things from the internet, but there's also a lot of bad things. Advertising. Plastic. Well, you see, plastic is good in theory if we were actually reusing it and not only having single-use plastics. Selfie stick. Okay, I see your point, but at the same time, it's just like a minor annoyance. People who play six plus hours of a video game in a day? How? People who stare at their phone and feed 
grades all day? How? Ooh, really came in with the Uno reverse. Ooh, start game, play for six hours, close game. I don't know why people always think it's like an active choice to play a game that long. Sometimes it just happens. That's rookie numbers, TBH. When you have no job, no friends, no GF, no life, you tend to find yourself in a position where you're knocking down six or seven hours per day on video games. Or at least that's how it is for me. It's a little sad, but it's also true. Mostly at work. I'm night manager at a pretty quiet hotel with maybe 90 minutes of actual work to do most nights. Six hours a day is easy to get in a single shift at work. Dog, you gotta teach me your skills. Like, how do you play games at work? I would love to get away with that. Because it's fun, and I like improving or experiencing interesting stories. My problem with playing games is that if I don't have four plus hours to dedicate to a session, I might not want to even start. I need to escape reality and go to a place I feel happy, edge runner style. Speaking of edge runners, I did start playing cyberpunk again and oh my god, I closed it almost immediately. <laughs> like, how do you make the time? Explain further. I don't have time to begin with. Doesn't stop me though. I am in reality very irresponsible. At least you recognize your faults. Easy. Is there anything in your life where time seems to fly by while doing that thing? For many people, it's playing games. Dude, if I'm having a fun time with stuff I want to do, guess what? I will lose eons. Kids who used rose art instead of Crayola when they were young? Where are you now? Good. I drive a Buick Encore now, drink RC Cola, and work at the phone company. The phone company? Oh, God. At the store, buying my kids all the Crayola she wants. You see, right there. That's how you break generational trauma. I became successful in life, and now I buy the 64 box of Crayola with built-in sharpener. Living the life. I ate them both regardless. The question was, where are you now? Are you still eating Rose Art and Crayola? I had both. I am now bisexual. Coincidence? I think not. Hashtag wake up America. Still poor. Thanks for asking. That's the whole school district here. They take all the supplies from the kids and distribute them back to the kids equally. So the parents all started sending equally bad things. Isn't it beautiful when a community really comes together to support each other? I'm in my living room, but I am still salty about those shitty crayons. What about the crazy art kids? R.I.P. Oh my lord, I forgot that was a company until just now. Making feature films for a living with a wonderful wife and a home we own. I like that, actually. That's, that's, that's really wholesome and sweet. I'm dying here. Hard-hitting questions. What are your feelings and thoughts about Bill Burr? He's a funny guy. What else can I say? He's hilarious. Strange guy, but I like him mostly. He's said some things I think are dumb, but I think that's the Boston in him. For the most part, I think he seems like a stand-up guy, especially lately. Funny, too. Dude don't give a sh**. I like it. He really likes Philadelphia. Bill Burr is a human on the planet Earth. You're not technically wrong. He walks the line perfectly for me. Super funny and reminds me of my dad who grew up in Boston. Genius. Insane delivery. One of the greats. He's pretty funny, but I hate how my algorithm starts to fill up with men's rights slash anti-feminism slash conservative stuff when I watch clips of him. I don't think he holds those views himself, but clearly a lot of his fans do. It is always bizarre bizarre to see how the algorithm is really working depending on what you watch. Hilarious. Would hate to be roasted by the guy. He has no filter. I feel like his specials have lowered in quality. Maybe I'm just getting old, but they don't have me crying in laughter like the old ones. Depression and desperation are generally what makes people funny. Once comics get big, they don't have the hard times to fuel them and keep them relatable, so they start to fall off. Very true. There are a lot of comedians that once they're big, they just kind of talk about rich people problems so the masses don't really relate anymore. What is your fave childhood movie? The Goonies, of course. God, The Goonies is so good. If you haven't watched it, please go watch. Land Before Time. Also my answer if I want to traumatize a child. The Little Mermaid. It's a classic. I wonder if people are going to say this about the new live-action remake. Die Hard. Interesting childhood, but it's a good movie. Labyrinth. One of these days I'll watch it, but I, th I think I need to be mentally prepared. The Muppet Movie, 1979. The the Lion King and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. It's so weird because I know I've watched E.T. I just, I can't, I couldn't tell you anything about the movie. George of the Jungle. I don't have a favorite one. I have many. Aliens is a good movie. Hercules was my sh**. 
when I was a kid. Who put the glad in Gladiator? Hercules? Probably one of my favorite Disney soundtracks. I used to watch Tom and Jerry, The Fast and the Furry, every single day when I was little. The Fantastic Four. I do hope one day we get a good Fantastic Four series. Toyland and the Rugrats movie. If you haven't watched the Rugrats movie in a long time, it is surprisingly dark. What's something that changed names, but you refuse to call it the new name? Number one is going to be Comcast. They changed their name to Xfinity. It's still Comcast, and they still suck. Sears Tower. I didn't even know they changed the name. It's seeing Willis Tower? That's so bleh. Sci-Fi Channel will always be Sci-Fi Channel. It's not a channel for three-year-olds. The Sky Dome. Puff Daddy. Puff. P. Diddy. Diddy. Love. I gave up. Those two controller buttons will always be Start and Select. It always just felt like a universal rule. I don't know why companies are trying to change the formula. Camp Snoopy. Okay, admittedly, that's pretty cool. A whole amusement park for Snoopy and some of the Peanuts characters? Come on. Meta will always be Facebook to me. Facebook will always be the Facebook to me. Mormons are trying to be called members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. F that. Y'all are Mormons. Dunkin' Donuts. I'll never understand this change. Like, why drop the donuts? People were already calling you Dunkin'. You don't have to feed into it. Downtown Disney. Isn't it called, like, Disney Springs now? I, I don't know. I'm not a big Disney guy. It'll always be Burma to me. Oh, that just shows how uneducated I am. I did not know Burma was formerly Myanmar. Hollywood Studios will always be MGM to me. I don't call Baby Yoda Grogu. Snoop Lion. I don't even think he kept that name change. It's, at least according to Wikipedia, it says he's still Snoop Dogg. What's something you should never trust? A fart. It's always a risk and you will always lose. A quiet room when you have toddlers. It's either something horrible has happened or something horrible is about to happen. A big butt and a smile. Those are two very clear signs that that girl is poison. Insurance companies. Absolute thieves. Anyone who says, trust me. Uh, I don't know, that's more of a context problem. It depends on who's saying it. Advice on Reddit. I don't trust you. Well, this is somewhat paradoxical. Any promise that isn't in writing. I learned this the hard way because I bought a car recently and oh boy, oh boy they gave me some promises. People. Yeah, not always the best to trust those things. A man who wears suspenders and a belt. Reddit as a news source. Always try to double check your sources because you don't want to be locked in an echo chamber. Don't trust a hoe. Never trust a hoe. What comes to mind when you think of 8 p.m.? Oh, that's my bedtime. Yeah, I, I have to brush my teeth and get in my jammies. 20 hour? I never learned 24 hour time and I don't know how to pronounce this technically. I should be getting ready for bed. Pizza time. Weird thing to think of, but it's just so convenient to have pizza at 8 p.m. Okay, yeah, sure, if that works for you. Mint chocolates. You can't have them at 8, you villain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're an adult, probably, so they can make their own choices. Time to relax until your brain thinks of one bad thing and then you're spiraling for the next three hours. Sunday Night Simpsons. Growing up, 8 o'clock was when the best TV shows started. Was 8 o'clock when Cartoon Network would switch over to Adult Swim? I can't really remember. I don't have cable. Makes me think of Thursday and October. If this is a reference, it's right over my head. I If I start getting ready for bed now, I can get a full eight hours of sleep. Hey, um, could you just do me a real quick favor and get out of my head? Get out of my head. I do this every night. Get out of my head. Damn it. That's what time I have to be at work tonight. Thanks, a-hole. No prob, homie. How close 801 is. Oh, God. It's only 60 seconds away. What is a joke that can't offend anyone. We're treading in some dangerous water. Let's see. What's brown and sticky? A stick. Why's it gotta be brown? What's red and tastes like blue paint? Red paint. Kinda insensitive to people who can't taste. Yeah, come on, man. You need to do some real reflecting. What's blue and smells like red paint? Blue paint. This joke is so ableist. There are colorblind people who can't tell the difference between red and blue paint, and you're turning their struggle into a joke. SMH. What's long, hard, and full of seamen. A submarine. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Alright, that's cute. It's fine. What's two plus two? Fish. The most offensive that will get is being mildly annoying. Wow. Making fun of people that are bad at math? How rude of you. It's a 
offensive to make jokes about people's educations like that. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot. All right, I guess we weren't really looking for good jokes. What happens when I V? What? <laughs> what, what is this? A woke joke. All right, Titan, do me a favor. Explain what woke means. I, I, I'm very unaware of the term. What's brown and tastes like nuts? Squirrel poop. I really don't want to search this up, but is this true? Oh, buddy, no, don't fall for it. Why did the Oreo go to the dentist? Because it lost its filling. Whoa, kind of classist of you. Uh, there are some Oreos that can't go to the dentist. What are you looking for in a TV series? What catches your eye and grabs your attention? I'm looking for something that has a well-crafted story, characters I can connect with, and features unexpected twists and turns. Realism, drama, suspense. Feel like a lot of shows really hit those last two points pretty good, but then the realism aspect is just, well, eh. The clear problem or goal. Like AOT Titans bursting through the wall, or Money Heist starting out with the heist in the first episode. I believe that would be considered, like, the hook to a TV show, and yes, it's very important to have the hook in the first episode. First, I look to see if I recognize any cast from previous works because I enjoy familiarity, and then I look for genre that usually pulls me in pretty quickly, and also music. If a TV show has a good opening slash ending, or even good hype music that gets stuck in my head, I'm in, lol. Lately, I've been watching a lot of period piece Royal Court K-dramas. There is something appealing to me about every show having characters with all the same jobs as the show before, but rearranged in terms of who's allied with who and who the audience is supposed to root for. So just seeing a familiar set of robes on the splash screen will get me to at least read the synopsis and and try to find a trailer. I love it when they're realistic and simple, like they're recorded from the middle of life. Depends on what mood I'm in. Yeah, I mean, personally, my taste changes day to day. I have no idea what I like. I am so sick of shows that have a strong start, then get slow beyond meaning by episode four. You can tell the writers had this amazing pitch with a great ending, but no idea how to fill the space between. I like shows with female characters that aren't just decoration. Arcane is awesome. Standalone episodes. I'm so sick of the never-ending story arc. I just want to be entertained for an hour or so. I have no problem with there being an underlying theme or goal, but really sick of the 12-hour movie format that is just the norm now. Admittedly, I can understand that. A lot of shows are going for, like, the hour-long format, and sometimes they're just not packed with anything interesting. What is your superpower? I can look you right in the eyes while you talk and not hear a damn thing you just said. I can write essays the day they're due in class, 9.15 a.m. class, and get good grades on them. It's a bad thing, but I can't stop procrastinating. I can fly. Oh, really? Prove it. Show us a video. But uh, be safe, please. Overthinking. Ah, uh, you must be a fellow Virgo, I see. I can fold fitted sheets. Okay, so can I, if I get my roommate to help me. I don't have any, but I can heal from injury fairly quicker than average people. I also, interestingly, have a really robust immune system. Like, I can heal from wounds, normally require stitches and closures, sometimes without scars. I've been bitten by spiders and stung by hornets and wasps. Very few of them had scars. Holding my pee long. I guess that's a power in some regard. Careful of UTIs, though. I can tell the difference between butter and I can't believe it's not butter. I can be very confidently wrong about a lot of things. I fall asleep really fast, no matter what's going on in my life at that moment. Work, school, exams, heartbreaks, anything. Five minutes and I'm out. I I wish I had your skills. I can tell you the exact number of letters in a word the moment I hear or read it. Well, reading is kind of cheating because you see it, but hearing is kind of impressive. Complacency. My superhero name is Whatever Man. Calling cats from a distance. Spreading butter evenly on toast. Picking the perfect movie. Well, I mean, perfect for you. I don't know if it's perfect for everyone. I can wound with my eyes and I have built-in noise cancellation. If I see a photo, I can guess what day it was taken on. Sometimes I can guess the time, too. Keep in mind, they're not saying they can guess correctly, they're just saying that they can guess. I can pretend to be interested in whatever anyone is saying to such a phenomenal degree that they get more and more enthusiastic as they go on, no matter how mind-numbingly bored I am. Been told I have a calming effect on animals. Okay, yeah, let's uh, throw you in a cage with a bear, see what happens. Spotting inconsistencies in TV shows, but only things no one else would care about, like a cup being half full, then full, then half again, etc. Pleasing old people. Pervert. Yeah, what do you mean pleasing there, buddy? What is the worst video game you have ever played? Maybe Halo 
5. I've only ever heard a few good things about Halo 5, so it's it's probably not great. World of Tanks. Worst 3,297 hours of my life. Hunt down the free man. It's probably for the best that I've never heard of this game. E.T. Atari 2600. I never understood what to do. Ran around, neck up and down, fell in holes. Even though the game sucks so bad that it was just filling up landfills for a while, I, I want one so bad. Where's Waldo on NES? It was a hot mess of colors and nothing else. I can appreciate the attempt, but uh, NES, not really the time yet. League of Legends is by far the worst game I've played for more than an hour. How much is more than an hour? Are, are you talking like in the thousands? Anime Hunter. I got it as a joke because it was on sale for 59 cents. It's where you shoot anime girls with those? Can I say that? I don't know if I can say that. Probably Ghostbusters that was in the first gen game console. So NES? Alright, you gotta specify first gen here. <laughs> Fortnite? Why? I quite like Fortnite. If get past the cringe and toxicity, it's actually a really fun game, especially with a squad. I will admit the no build battle royale is kind of fun, I, I can't lie. Superman 64. Also Doom SNES. I didn't even know they had Doom on the SNES. Diablo 3. Is it a bad game, or are you mad at it because of what it's done to your life? The Lion King on SNES. It's not that bad, but I couldn't get past the first level when I was young. No one could. I think that is the curse of SNES. There were a lot of just unreasonably hard games. What are some reasons to never visit Britain? Because you could easily be visiting Ireland instead. Oh, uh, you know, it's a fair point. It is an entire island of shopkeepers. You know, I think you might have just convinced me. I don't think I need to go. Expense cold, rainy, and the food is shy. Ever since I saw beans on toast, I don't think I'll ever be taking a Brit's food recommendations. They got wasps. Okay, but in fairness, a lot of other places have wasps too. Honestly speaking, from my experience of Scotland and different parts of England, the weather is probs the worst thing. I think the people are typically sound. The British. I was waiting for it. It's like the biggest problem, you know? They are prejudice against bananas. Is that true? Do British people not like bananas? All the British people. It's like an infestation. Yeah, they're everywhere. The food. Bad breath from bad teeth. It rains a lot, but not really heavy rains. Just a constant mist that makes everything perpetually a bit wet. If you plan to go hiking, please note that you should plan for terrain that is at least 25% sheep crap. The entire country appears to be taken over by sheep. Who needs this much wool? Who on earth owns these sheep 10 miles from the nearest village? Everything else is pretty nice. Currency conversion rate is probably the hindrance for most other countries. What is your most favorite short poem? Two-Headed Calf by Laura Gilpin. Tomorrow, when the farm boys find this freak of nature, they will wrap his body in newspaper and carry him to the museum. But tonight, he is alive and in the north field with his mother. It is a perfect summer evening, the moon rising over the orchard, the wind in the grass, and as he stares into the sky, there are twice as many stars as usual. I've seen this poem float around TikTok talk recently, and it, it it's nice. I like it. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. It makes them taste quite funny, but it keeps them on the knife. The fog comes on little cat feet. I am sorry, what does the fog do? Haikus are easy, but sometimes they don't make sense. Refrigerator. I can really feel the emotions in this one. It's, it's kind of making me cry. I think that I shall never see. My cataracts are blinding me. There once was a lady from Nantucket. So on and so on. You can't just not give us the full poem. Come on, man. Here I sit. Both cheeks parted, tried to shit, but only farted. A fart so great it cracked the bowl and burnt the hair around my hole. Either that or Pangerban slash White Panger, written by an Irish monk in the 9th century. There's too many kids in this tub. There's too many elbows to scrub. I washed a behind that I'm sure wasn't mine. There's too many kids in this tub. Very Dr. Seussy, and if that is Dr. Seuss, you can put me in jail for not knowing. What are some actually fun facts you know of? German chocolate cake was not named that because it's based in Germany. It was named after the creator of it, Samuel German. See, this is why naming things is really unreliable. Biologically speaking, sharks have been around longer than trees. Huh, good to know. M. Night Shyamalan wrote the screenplay for Stuart Little. I didn't see this coming. Shyamalan and his twists, man, I, you just can't get away. Google Images was literally created after 
actor Jennifer Lopez wore her infamous dress at the 2000 Grammys. So many people were searching for her outfit, they added an image function. Ah, the more you know. I found out yesterday that the term Shadow Realm in Yu-Gi-Oh! is not canon in the original Japanese version, but four kids made it up to censor death in the English version. Just remember, every time Yugi sent somebody to the Shadow Realm, that was him killing them. Kaiba is an exception, I guess. Who's the best TV dad ever? Gomez Adams. Fantastic husband, a fantastic father, and a legendary family man. Hal, thank you. Finally, somebody actually appreciates the man. Uncle Phil. Everybody wants a dad like Uncle Phil. Bandit of Bluey. I wish Bandit was my dad. Andy Griffith. Who? This might be before my time. In terms of being a good parent, probably Bob Belcher. He seems like a good guy. He's just trying his best. Phil Dunphy. He may be goofy and a little weird, but he's a good dad. Bob Berger. Oh, my favorite dad, Bob Berger. Red Foreman. I know it's a TV show. It's just such a weird name to be called Red. Walter White. Al Bundy. I mean, like, debatable on Walter to an extent. Homer Simpson. Remember how he rolled down a cliff on a skateboard just to show Bart how dangerous it is? Frank Gallagher. Okay, so we are saying bad fathers now, right? Sandy Cohen. Once again, I must ask, who? What's the most disturbing secret you've discovered about someone close to you? A work colleague appeared on the front page of a national newspaper for a life of fraudulent qualification. He claimed medical and law degrees, was a brigadier in the Army Reserves, and was the CEO for a major Heath Fund. He actually was a brigadier in the Army Reserves, but that and the Heath Fund role were largely built on the fraudulent qualifications and a progression of jobs also based on this claim. In reality, the only qualification he actually had was as a mortuary assistant. Not even his wife knew. The fraudulent degrees had been gained when he was in the Army Reserves recruiting, and he had access to submitted position applications. He came undone when he applied for a government job and some flags were raised by the recruitment people. He tried to withdraw the application, but didn't realize that an application for a government role has the same weight as a statutory declaration and cannot be withdrawn. It all went very south very quickly, and he ended up doing jail time. When my grandfather passed away, we discovered that he did not exist. His name was not in any government registry, and he was a normal citizen, paid taxes, had a license, and everything. Lived a long life, married to my grandmother for over 50 years, had multiple children, and everything normal. Still to now, no one knows who he really was and why he had a false name. My mom received birthday cards with money in them for years from her parents, and she kept the cards with the money in them, saving to buy a piano or for sentimental reasons. My sister, who has reportedly stolen from family members, found the collection of cards slash money and took them. My mom only wanted the cards back when she realized what happened. My sister denied everything. Prick you, Emily. My great-grandmother was married to three different people at the same time. The men were from different branches of the military. She was collecting all three of their paychecks at a time. My brother was stealing money from my father, who had dementia. This went on for a year, and then I found out about it because the bank, who had my father's mortgage, called me wondering why it hadn't been paid in six months. My father's bank account went into the negative around this time, too, and when I confronted my brother about it, he said, well, I gotta pay my bills. I was about to take control of all the accounts and make sure shot got back on track, but my father ended up in the hospital and died shortly after that. My brother also stole some of my inheritance, too. In the end, he stole over $5,000 from his dying father. What a pathetic piece of garbage. I wasn't close to this person, but I did hang out with him a few times, and the best man at my wedding had another really close friend who turned out to be a serial killer. It messed him up really bad. He already had mental health issues, and this sent him over the edge. I can't even talk to him anymore. I miss you, man. My best friend confessed to me that he has a child as a result of a long-distance affair in another country. He has three kids in the U.S. and is in a toxic marriage his wife does not know. My coworker lets her dog hump her leg every morning until he releases, while she has her coffee, which has stayed with me since I heard it. I can't think of anything else when they talk to me. The stuff some people admit, man. You wouldn't be able to torture this information out of me. Yeah, bro, Batman could not get that information out of me. That's disgusting. So my grandmother, who's been estranged from my family for a long time now for a multitude of reasons, has this weird thing where she has to share food with people. Are you ordering steak at the restaurant? Well, oh boy, she's got to order the same thing even if she doesn't like steak. Try her drink. It's really good. Take the first bite of chicken to let her know if it's any good. This always really annoyed me because I hate sharing food. One day I brought it up to my mom and she was like, oh yeah, grandma is afraid of being poisoned, so she wants other people to try it first. So let me get this straight. Grandma thinks someone is trying to poison her, so she has me try the food first? And it makes so much sense looking back because she literally would not take a bite of anything she ordered until someone else had a bite first. Thanks, Grandma. Looking out for yourself, Grandma. You know what? I don't respect it because that's kind of messed up. What is something that old people love that you don't understand? I'm a window cleaner and have a lot of elderly customers. Over the years, I've found they love to be the first one to tell me one of the neighbors have died. To the point where if I say, yeah, Thelma already let me know, they look genuinely disappointed and annoyed that they weren't the one to break the news to me. Telling you who died recently, famous or not famous? Two in a row? <laughs> that might 
I've never heard of an old person telling me that kind of stuff before. And again, I don't really talk to old people. I don't like them all that much. It's not a personal thing. If anyone here is old and watching these videos, I really appreciate it. I've reached the tipping point. I love my hedge and some drunk kid fell in it. Big hole. We'll take four years to grow back. This get off my lawn moment awakened the old in me. In my country of Brazil, old people sit in front of their houses and do absolutely nothing for hours. Just watching people and cars go by. This is more common for lower social class. For instance, my grandma and her friends gather every day at someone's door and just sit there until the night comes. They're retired. Telling anyone who will listen about their various ailments. Look, I'm 57, so I'm ancient by red standards, but I vowed early on that I will not become one of these oversharing old people. Sitting hours behind those slot machines. You know what they say, 99% of gamblers quit before they hit big. Find China and silverware. It's pretty in the way anything made in bulk can be. It's expensive and has very little resale value. Fragile as frick and virtually useless unless you're trying to impress another old person. Personal opinion, no hate. Facebook. Adding your own name to a comment like, great photos, love mum and John. I freaking know it's you, Maureen. It shows me when you comment. Yeah, Facebook sucks. <laughs> I actually uh, deleted, completely deleted my Facebook uh, last year and it's been great. Soap operas. I get bored after 30 minutes. How does someone watch 500 episodes? I've never met anyone in real life who has ever watched a soap opera before. I feel like they're not real people. You know, people who like soap operas aren't real. They're like government plants. Oh my God. Just sitting down in my recliner is glorious. Younger people may think I'm nuts, but I have so much stuff going on. It's nice to just sit down and relax. This one I can vouch for. I actually bought my father who's, you know, in his in his late 50s, uh, his first ever recliner, and he loves it. it. The old people, you know, and their recliners. <laughs> what is your favorite insult that doesn't sound like an insult? Common customer service technique I use. Customers ranting and yelling on the phone, and I don't say anything or try to interrupt. Then when they pause and ask if I'm still there, I say, yes, I was just waiting for you to finish. Takes the wind out of their sails every time. I'm so glad I'm not a over the phone customer service person because they will yell at you less in, in real life, which I'm, I mean, I'm not okay with, but I prefer it over being yelled at over the phone. Not necessarily an insult, more than a jokey comment to a coworker, but I love it. Has anyone told you you're doing a good job today? Responds, no. Think about that. You're at the top of the bell curve. It's impressive how you manage to stay so confident. It's hard to underestimate you. You continue to meet expectations. I once made a moderately humorous remark among some friends and one person said to me, that's the funniest thing you've ever said. I think they meant well, but it really was quite the burn. There's a Yiddish one. I hope someone names a child after you. It sounds nice until you realize that Jews don't name children after living relatives. Oh, well, learning some stuff about Jewish culture today. See you later. Not if I see you first. This has become so common in language that people don't realize it's an insult. You literally saying that if I see you first, I'm going to avoid you. I'm going to start using that one. That's wonderful. What movie blew your mind when you first saw it? Aliens. What an incredible movie going experience. I was really engrossed the entire time. Spirited away. The feeling it left me with was like I'd had an intense, vivid dream. I'd never seen such soulfully executed animation. Jurassic Park. Fight Club. It was such a weird movie with such crazy characters. Beautifully shot and a great story with themes that are still of interest today. Star Wars 1977. I was nine years old. Never saw anything like it before. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. This was the first movie that sprung into my mind as well. Editing and non-linear storytelling all work so well together and I love the very tender and moving way it examines the pain and joy of being in a relationship. I wish I could wipe my memory and see it again for the first time. The Land Before Time. Granted, I was like four years old, but still. Children of Men. Clive Owen and Michael Caine are amazing. The direction by Cuaron and general dark feel of the movie just suck you right into the bleakness. The Silence of the Lambs. Every single movie I had ever seen had made a heroine interested in love. Finally, a movie about a genuinely terrifying bad guy and the hero doesn't fold or fade and the same with the book. Sadly, no sequel ever existed, ever. What is the single best episode of television you've ever seen? Three stories from House I always think is a brilliant episode. You Only Move Twice had the best Simpson one-off, Hank Scorpio. Futurama, the late Philip J. Fry. Best episode of the newer run in the entire series. I've seen it so many times. Bojack Horseman, the view from halfway down. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when Will's dad had left him again and he's crying to Uncle Phil and says, why didn't he want me, man? I was in tears. Um, actually, <laughs> nerd emoji, uh, the, the quote is, how come he don't want me, man? Uh, please educate yourself next time you post on Reddit. <laughs> the Simpsons, the monorail episode. The Simpsons episode where Grandma Simpson comes back. The ending with Homer sitting on his car looking up at the sky still gets me. The Simpsons, Mr. Plow. South Park, make love, not Warcraft. The episode is a masterpiece. I'm a big South Park enjoyer. I really am. And I gotta agree that the World of Warcraft episode is so goddamn funny. Probably, I don't know if it's my favorite episode, but definitely like top five for sure. What is a video game you think everyone needs to play at least once in their life? Tetris. It puts all other games in context. No, it doesn't. Tetris is boring. <laughs> Portal or Half-Life. Awesome games. I never played Half-Life. I probably should. Saw my pals play it and they love it, but I've just never gotten around to it. I think I even owned the game and I just never played it. I don't know. The original Super Mario Bros. for the NES. At least 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. I'm referring to Super Mario Bros. on the NES, World 1 Level 1, and SMB 
World 1 Level 2. Nothing about SMB 2 or 3. Played it recently and it holds up surprisingly well. Everyone should experience the thrill and fun of Left 4 Dead 2 when you're playing with three of your friends. Bioshock, Journey, Stardew Valley. Rarely do I find a video game that's truly relaxing in the traditional sense of the world, but this is one of them. I certainly didn't expect this simple post to take off the way that it has. Thank you so much for the awards and I'm glad that Stardew Valley means that much to so many of you. It does to me too. Star drops all around. Other than like the classic Nintendo game like Pokemon or, or you know, those kind of things or Minecraft for me. I know Minecraft's not a Nintendo game, but you know what I mean. Stardew Valley has to be probably one of my favorite games of all time. Probably, definitely my top five, if not my top three. Uh, I, I play it all the time. I can play it vanilla. I can play it modded. And no matter what, I'm having a great time. It's such a good game. I'm so excited for the Haunted Chocolatier. I hope it's so good. You have to listen to one song on repeat for 24 hours straight to win a million dollars. What song are you choosing? I've worked in a cafe and I've basically done this for minimum wage plus tips. Prove you have the money and willingness to pay and you can pick whatever damn song you want. Am I S I R L O U? I don't know what that is. And I'd do that for free. Literally anything. I'd listen to a loop of children screaming over dogs barking at a lawn mowing crew with those backpack blowers mixed with a cat gagging up a hairball while a baby cries in the background. For a milli? I'd listen to Donald Trump's stream of consciousness superimposed over an Indian call center while Bozo the Clown scratches a chalkboard next to me. One day, one million? Literally anything. 500 miles. It comes back around. Thanks for the golden awards, y'all. You're welcome. I really want to feel like I earned that million, so Mambo number five. Any instrument will be fine. Instrumental version of Bittersweet Symphony coming right up. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Is that guy shitting on Bittersweet Symphony? That's a beautiful instrumental. I love that song. Bittersweet Symphony is an amazingly good song. I can listen to it all the time. It's been like one of my favorite songs since I was a child. Sandstorm by Darude. I'm just gonna vibe for 24 hours. Mortal Kombat theme song. Cotton Eyed Joe. What is something that young people love that you don't understand? Filming themselves crying. Yeah, I saw one the other day of a girl holding her pet snake that died and she's crying like she just discovered it. Like she found her dead snake, set up a tripod with her camera and phone, and then got the angle right, recorded herself crying with the dead snake, and then edited it with captions about her dead snake and put sad music over it. It's kind of gross when you think about it. She's looking for sympathy, and in reality, if you're doing all that crap, the snake obviously is less important than your likes on social media. I consider myself part of the young crowd, even though I turned 25 in two months, but um, yeah, I don't get this either. People who film themselves crying are just kind of silly, and I'm sure there's reasoning for some people to do it. It's not a blanket statement of judgment, but if I ever go on a TikTok and I see people crying and filming themselves, crying, and it's not like an ironic bit, I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you? All those bad prank videos on people in public. Public TikTok dancing. I can't handle the secondhand embarrassment when someone is dancing in aisle five. Film random strangers without consent to make fun of them online all for internet clout. I really hate the TikTok voice. She's got a name, you know. I just don't know it. <laughs> I don't understand certain genres of TikTok or YouTube videos. Who is entertained by those videos where it's a robot voice reading out Reddit comments while Subway Surfer is being played on screen? Who is the audience for these videos where some dude with an awful haircut ask people risque questions either on a college campus or at the beach. Yeah, guys, who would watch the robot voice reading Reddit videos when you have a wonderful array of channels that have real people like me doing it for you? I know you're watching this on TikTok or on YouTube shorts. I don't know if we're on Instagram reels. I don't think we are. But guys, all of the, the, the robot reading voice Reddit videos, block all those accounts. Ask MKs all you need, baby. That's what we're here for. And when you watch this channel instead, you're supporting real people like me and I guess Brandon too and the editors, but only a little bit. Prime, the drink. Simply don't understand the hype. Snapchat and streaks. I get Prime. Um, I I've tried it before. I'm, I I'm a big sports drink guy. Always have been, uh, but my favorite is the Lime Cucumber Gatorade. Best sports drink I've ever had in my entire life. Prime isn't bad. It's not a bad drink. It tastes good. It's got less carbs and less sugar than regular sports drinks, I think, but it definitely is not worth all of this hype from all the kids. <laughs> you know, like it's just, I get that your favorite YouTube YouTubers made a drink that's in stores, but come on, it's not that good. Snapchat streaks though, me and my wonderful friend Lena, we have a Snapchat streak of almost 1500 days. I think it's I think it's closer to 1300 days, but we have, a, we have a big streak and you can blame her for that. Doesn't matter, they'll be pretending to hate the things they used to love in a couple years anyway, just like we did. Like what people did with FNAF, you know? It started off as being cringy and weird, and now that FNAF is getting a movie and it's in the mainstream, everyone loves FNAF. I've always been a FNAF guy. Declaring everything is a result 
result of mental illness. Sometimes people are just assholes. ASMR mouth sounds. Some of them really suck, but I've definitely stumbled across a couple of them that are that are nice, and I enjoy it. But most of them are kind of weird. Social media celebrities. As a child, what's a song you sang loud and proud, only to find as an adult that it's super inappropriate for a child to be singing? Get off by Prince. My mother heard me sing 21 positions in a one-night stand and took the disc off of me. It unfortunately belonged to my older sister, and I got punished twice in one week. I still love that song. It wasn't me by Shaggy. I don't want anybody else, and when I think about you, I touch myself. I know that song, but um, I don't want to sing it. Me So Horny by the 2 Live Crew. My dad once said, it's your mom's favorite song. Thanks, dad. My Humps, Black Eyed Peas. Apparently, they were not just talking about milk and Cocoa Puffs. A particular song that mentions, I'll take you to the candy shop and let you lick my lollipop, left me completely unaware of its underlying meaning back then, as I blissfully enjoyed its melody. That song is Candy Shop by 50 Cent. My 11-year-old completely innocent niece, let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. Me. Mm, let's play a different song. To the window. Context. I didn't really know much English. I was eight and I knew all the words to Baby Got Back. The real Slim Shady. What is the one thing you do on Friday to start your weekend properly? In the IT world, we have read-only Fridays. If you don't change anything on Friday, then you won't need to fix it on Saturday. For me, I end the day by emailing myself a list of all the things I'm in the middle of or need to get done next. Then I can clear my mind and know I can hit the ground running on Monday again. Take my pants off as soon as I get home. I won't need them until Monday. Clock in to work and get ready for everyone else in the world who is off work the next two days to come eat at my restaurant. Then I'm off on a Tuesday and everyone looks at me like I have no job. I go for a jog in the morning, but I take a particular route, which goes around a really pleasant park. Pleasant Park is a Fortnite location. I associate that park with Fridays and it starts my day in a great mood. I have a clown figurine that sits on a shelf above my work desk at home. After I've clocked off on Friday afternoon, this clown moves from the shelf to the front of my desk until Monday morning. Because when the clown is down, party animals in town. Eat pizza and listen to Good Vibrations by Marky Mark. Get ready to cry at work, but on a weekend. Which movie soundtrack slaps from beginning to end? The Last of the Mohicans. A goofy movie. The entire movie had absolutely no right to be that freaking good. Wasn't just the song, though that was an undeniably legendary way to close that movie out. The Blues Brothers. Prince of Egypt. I send my scourge. I send my sword. Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. Oh brother, where art thou? Edit. It makes me so happy that there are this many people who also love that movie and soundtrack. Pulp Fiction. It's Tarzan, right? You'll be in my heart was the last song I played in my school brass band before I left, and it will always have a place in my heart, like the song suggests. Flash Gordon. Flash. Ah. Space Jam. Hit him high by Be Real, Coolio, Method Man, LL Cool J, and Busta Rhymes. Had absolutely no business being that hard on a single for a kid's movie. Shrek, but only if you're a believer. Shrek was good, but Shrek 2 was masterful. Hans Zimmer. Yes, all of them. My personal pick would probably be the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack. I just watched Across the Spider-Verse this week, as of recording this, but I think I, I did like Across the Spider-Verse better, but I do think Into the Spider-Verse had a better soundtrack. Who do you believe is literally evil? Hillary Clinton. I knew a guy who retired from an investment firm before he was 40. I inquired if I can get a job at the firm, and he told me if you can look a woman in the eyes who scrub floors all her life and tell her that you can quadruple her life savings by investing in a stock you know is worthless, then you could work there. I felt sleazy just listening to him. I lost all respect for him. He preyed on poor, desperate people and ruined their lives so he could retire in his 30s. I found out from a friend that the investment firm was a boiler room fly-by-night scam. Everyone who worked there was taken out in handcuffs. Ted Bundy. Epstein. You just know. Phone scammers. They attack the vulnerable without remorse. Scientologists. R. Kelly. I'm pretty sure all those people are genuinely evil. I'm gonna have to agree with you here. What's considered a kid's movie, but is still very enjoyable to watch as an adult? The Incredibles. Rewatching it as an adult makes you realize how brilliant it truly is. A Goofy Movie. The greatest father and son story of all time. Treasure Planet. Gorgeous visuals. Great character design and fantastic score. Megamind. Oh, you're a villain, all right. Just not a super one. The Emperor's New Groove. The Addams Family. Shrek. Referred to earlier in the video, Shrek was good, but Shrek 2 is a masterpiece. Pixar movies. All of them? I know you're not talking about the good dinosaur. If you were to eat the same thing for breakfast every morning, what would it be? I already do that. Coffee and Outlook emails. For years, I had a peanut butter and banana sandwich every school or workday for breakfast. I guess I really only stopped because I stopped eating breakfast in general. This isn't what I'd pick for a special occasion, but for an everyday thing, it's still the most obvious choice for me. I've eaten three eggs for almost every breakfast the last 13 years. Coffee and hatred. Bacon and egg sandwich. I already eat the same thing every day. Rice, scrambled egg and spinach with soy sauce and a little nutritional yeast. It's a toss up between French toast and honey nut Cheerios. A tie. My wife's breakfast burritos or Sasha's gravy and biscuits. Oh, what I wouldn't do. Oh my God. Guys, I love cooking. If you couldn't tell by me being a big man, but biscuits and gravy for breakfast is one of my favorite things to actually cook at home. I am so good at it. And whenever I score a beautiful wife who loves to eat food, I'm going to cook that for her. And she's going to be like, mm, Mason, you know what? I married you for a reason. And it's because you can cook biscuits and gravy. That's it. I'll be like, 
like, yeah, that's fine. Pretty much every day I have cottage cheese with blueberries, maple syrup, and pumpkin seeds. Delicious and filling. Y'all are sleeping on a Mexican breakfast. A couple of eggs, beans, and a tortilla, and you'll be full until dinner. If you want to get fancy, topped salsa, avocado, queso panela, or fresco, and a pair with coffee or fruit water. What actor or actress ruins a movie for you? She doesn't ruin it, but I audibly groan whenever she shows up. Gwyneth Paltrow. Nobody mentions Steven Seagal. Runs fatly around a corner. I was watching The Handmaid's Tale a few months ago, and I have a, a habit of looking up info about actors and info related to the shows I like. That's how I found out that Elizabeth Moss is a Scientologist. The show is such a jarring story of dystopian future with deep cultish and misogynistic behavior. I'm a cult survivor, and having a person supporting a cult with a history of abusing women, starring and producing that show, is just so hypocritical. I just couldn't keep watching it because looking at her made me sick. Ezra Miller. If they recast The Flash, I hope they find someone better than Ezra. Jared Leto. If I know he's in the movie, I avoid it like the plague. Cara Delevingne, for whatever reason. There is something so unserious about her acting. She just can't act at all. The Rock plays himself wherever he appears. Now it becomes a film about The Rock. He should narrate geological documentaries. No one said James Corden yet? James Corden. To quote Ricky Gervais in 2019, everyone got to see James Corden play a fat pr He was also in Cats, but no one saw that. Anything with Jennifer Lopez. Russell Brand. He doesn't act. He just plays himself, and I don't find him funny or interesting. It worked well in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, but that's about it. Get him to the Greek, too, I think. But to be fair, they were literally the same character. Pete Davidson. I know he's only been in a few movies, but no thanks. I think that one's the only weird one to me. I, I genuinely think Pete Davidson's a pretty good guy. Like, he's funny. He is funny. His dad died in 9-11. That's not funny. But to him, it is. To me, no. I mean, that's a tragedy. What advice would you give to young couples who are starting to live together? Patience and communication will solve 90% of your problems, and the other 10% will be solved by a reoccurring scheduled date night. If something your partner does bugs you, then talk about it. Don't let it build. You're going to start finding out things that she does that annoy the hell out of you. And remember, she's finding out things about you too. Don't worry about how other couples do things. There's no rules for any of this. If you want to always do the dishes, that's fine. If he likes to clean, fine. You don't have to split everything 50-50 just because you've heard that. It's more important to do what works for you too. Let your partner know about your flaws when you have them and make sure you know theirs. Before you commit to living together, remember this piece of advice I was given many years ago by a lawyer. You know the difference between getting married and living together? Divorce has rules. Separate blankets. It's so nice to be able to breathe up without the concern of being a blanket hog. Watched a few episodes of Judge Judy. If I had a dollar for every young living together couple squabbling over money and property, I'd be rich. You don't have to do everything together. If he's asleep and you want to go, Jim, just go. 90% of your life will now be yelling, what? From the other room. How do you calm your anger? I have to get away from people. Think about cooking. It sounds weird, but I debate what I'm going to cook for dinner and run through ingredients in my head. That way I'm distracted from rage and it gives me time to process my feelings. My brain turns it into deep depression. That's not healthy. A therapist of mine told me that most most anger is a reaction to a different type of feeling. I try to analyze what other feeling I'm feeling and get to the core of it. Sometimes it sucks because anger is a knee-jerk response usually and really hard to calm, but to avoid arguments, it's better to analyze. It also helps you understand others more. I begin singing in my head, something calming like Pink Floyd or any number of Black Sabbath songs. If I'm getting impatient or trying not to call someone an idiot, I'll sing 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock rock in my head. By 6 o'clock rock, I'm usually over it and nobody even knows I was annoyed. The trick is to always be angry. Hey, that guy from the Avengers does that. Whistle a song. Song. No one can stay angry while whistling. That is not a challenge, by the way, guys. Y'all calm your anger? Bite my finger. I thought I was so weird for doing this. What are y'all starting to dislike more and more the older you get? Loud noises. People. I used to be a people person, but people ruined it. Waiting for things or other people. My patience has gotten progressively worse. I just know I like canceled plans more and more now. How despite working a good job with ostensibly good pay, things going backwards and opportunities contract. Apps. I shouldn't need to download an app for everything. Personally, I like having apps for the simplest things instead of having to like print things, like I'm flying for the first time this week in a, in a very long time, and I know they had apps before this, but the thought of we used to have to print off tickets, it sounds annoying, because then I might lose them, versus on my app or a flight, it's just always on my phone, and I always have my phone on me. You know, shopping, especially clothes shopping. I used to enjoy it, and now I find it mostly a chore. Dating. Agreed. I gave up years ago, and I'd rather die alone and have my cats eat me than deal with one more douche who can't carry on a simple conversation. Normal things that sometimes don't work like they need to, like the broom that just won't fucking stay still for a guy goddamn second on this fucking wall and little Quack. like that. What is a fact or statistic that seems fake but is real? Horses kill more people every year in Australia than all the other beasties combined. Everyone thinks it's the spiders and snakes that'll get you, but it's the horses you really gotta watch. Even their fucking horses are poisonous? In English, the color orange was named after the fruit. Before that, orange was just considered a shade of red. That's why gingers 
are called redheads. It took us more time to go from bronze swords to iron swords than it did for us to go from iron swords to nuclear weapons. Sharks have existed longer than trees have. Grasshoppers are also older than grass. They used to be just called hoppers. We live closer in time to the T-Rex than the T-Rex did to Stegosaurus. George Washington didn't know dinosaurs existed. What an idiot. Not my president. Barcode scanners scan the white lines, not the black ones. Wombat poo is cube-shaped to stop it from rolling away. I can't believe I just googled images of wombat poo. That's some interesting shit. If we lost all the dead space inside our atoms, we would each be able to fit into a particle of dust, and the entire human species would fit into the volume of a sugar cube. I know it's right, but I find it incredibly hard to believe. We went to the moon before we put wheels on a suitcase. Cleopatra lived closer in time to the mobile phone than she did construction of the pyramids. There was a window of time where a samurai could have faxed Abraham Lincoln. Who was the worst student in your high school, and what did they do that was so bad? There was a kid who walked up to the pencil sharpener and set the substitute teacher's hair on fire from behind her with a cigarette lighter, and then claimed sparks had flown out of the light switch. Yeah, he's in prison for other stuff now. The oldest sister of one of my classmates killed a pizza delivery person with the help of her boyfriend for $20 and a pizza. I knew a lot of bad people back in high school, but I think the guy who dropped a whole desk out of a third story window onto some kid qualify as the worst, purely because I think that qualifies as an attempted murder. The kid lived? Oh my god. The boy that put a pipe bomb into another kid's locker because he talked to the girl the bo original boy liked. He went to juvenile program and then disappeared. Not the worst student, but craziest thing to happen was freshman year. This kid got caught using a key logger to steal teacher's grade book logins to sell grade changes. He was also stealing credit card info. Kid got expelled and sent a revenge PPT to every student, teacher, and alumni from a random kid's email address that had Photoshop pictures of all the teachers and administrators and gang Quack. and onto beast Quack. Quack. ran into him a few years ago and he actually graduated Harvard and is in real estate now. I don't believe that for a Quack. second, you goddamn Reddit liar. My grade 9 science teacher, ironically to the story, is named Mr. Calm, had an infant son who died two weeks into the school year. He took at least a month off to grieve and when he returned, the resident class clown was up to his usual tricks, basically just trying to be as distracting as he could be. Finally, Mr. Calm had enough and told the kid to sit down and shut up. Then the kid said, it's a good thing your baby died young. Would have been a terrible life with you for a father. Mr. Calm snapped, picked up the kid's desk with the kid in it and threw it. Poor Mr. Calm got fired for this. Every other student who was there tried to defend our teacher, saying the kid got what he deserved, but nothing we said made a difference. Nothing happened to the kid. Still makes me angry to think about, and that was in 1994. Standard bully, but he took special joy in harassing and bullying the special ed kids. I think his greatest personal victory was when he got two kids with Down syndrome to fight each other. He's a cop now. Well, that escalated quick. No, sounds about right. We had a kid bring a gun to school, a flare gun, and he of course showed it off and accidentally fired it into a locker, causing a fire. That is why everyone in my high school ended up being required to have only see-through or mesh backpacks. There was a kid who would go around and take a shit in the bathroom sinks. They eventually caught him, but this went on for a while without anyone knowing who it was, so we referred to them as the poop phantom. Have you ever witnessed something that should have gotten someone fired at work? If so, what happened? The supervisor left the safe open. At this job, he should have absolutely gotten fired, but his blunder got overshadowed because one of the douchier employees stole 50k and went on the run for over half a day. I work overnights at a hotel. They hired a guy to be the security or valet, and in the first two weeks, he was found sleeping on the job. The first time, he was found by a third co-worker. We told the manager, and nothing happened. The second time, the manager found him sleeping in the bell closet in a wheelchair. He got sent home, but didn't get fired. A girl at my work literally punched another employee in the face multiple times at work. The girl who got punched left, obviously, and the girl who did the punching still works there to this day. Oh yeah, and there's also a video of it that was sent to a lot of their employees by her. She definitely has blackmail on the owner. That's the only logical reason we can think of why he won't fire her. Probably saw the video and didn't want to catch those hands. Me, when I used to show up to work drunk every day. Still don't know how I got away with it. Someone definitely knew. There was no way my breath smelled and my walking wasn't straight. But management liked me and drinking on the job was an immediate fire, so nobody said anything. I miss that job. I don't miss being drunk 24-7. My boss smacking me on the ass with a ruler. I got sent home for asking him what his f***ing problem was. I work in a kitchen. One of my coworkers will wash their gloves instead of changing them and will sometimes outright refuse to prepare some foods. Redditors who have actually won a lifetime supply of something, what was the supply you won and how long did it actually last? I know someone who won a free gas for life contest many years ago. They got a hundred dollar gift card every month. That's actually not terrible. My dad won a lifetime supply of cat food, but A, they delivered it all at once, and B, our cats didn't like that flavor. Of course. We donated it all to a local animal shelter who were super pleased. One free movie rental from Blockbuster every week. And, well, you know. When you get a lifetime supply of something, you never really expect to outlive the life of the product. I won a year's worth of 
Tombstone Pizza from a Coca-Cola bottle cap thing as a kid. They sent 52 coupons to use at the grocery store for a free pizza. I mean, that kind of checks out, but only 52. Come on. I won the Cash for Life $1,000 a week lottery about 10 years ago. Every year I send them proof I'm still alive, and they send me a check for $52,000 in the mail. Oh my god. Why, why, why? Why can't I have this? I won a year's worth of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. They gave me a coupon book with four coupons per month for 12 months. It's something. I once won a year's supply of Pepsi from a local radio station. The contest was finding specific serial numbers on a dollar bill and being the first to call into the station. The year's supply was a case. Wait, just one lousy case of Pepsi? I, I think that's kind of a scam. I won free Arby's for a year. They sent me $420 in gift cards. I don't know if that, like, mathematically adds up to, like, one sandwich a day, but that is just a perfect number. Has anyone ever been to a wedding where someone actually objected? And if so, how did that go? Went to a wedding where they skipped that part because the bride's adult daughter was planning to object. I'm not a wedding expert, but you can just skip certain parts of the ceremony? My auntie's fiancé was already married. Lady stood up waving marriage cert. So wedding didn't go ahead. The reception was on a long boat, so we still went to that. The fiancé went back to home country to sort it out and never came back. I went to a wedding where the best man was replaced a week before because he banged the bride. But the wedding still went ahead just with a different best man. They are divorced now. Ugh, yeah, that's just, that's just a waste of money at that point. I objected. I took giving my sister away literally. I wasn't the brightest three-year-old. Aw, I mean, you were three years old. It was probably cute and everybody laughed. I was at one where the groom thanked the bride's ex for dying as his loss was my gain. Didn't help the sons of his bride and ex were in attendance. Oh, buddy, no, you, you don't do that. In my cousin's wedding, her friend said, I object because she was not invited to the wedding. She was kicked out of the wedding. Attending a wedding where the minister said something along the lines of, if anyone here objects to this marriage, you can keep your mouth shut. Today is not about you. What's something popular that you refuse to get into? I'm a new mom, and there's so many stupid mom trends right now, but one of them is the, like, natural looking toys with really bland colors that are more aesthetic. They're toys. Ah, the sad beige moms and their sad beige babies. Celebrity worship. You can be a fan of a celebrity, just don't check on what they're doing 24 hours a day and maybe go touch some grass. Lip injections. Not shaming people who get plastic surgery or lip injections, whatever. I just think it's not worth it if you have to go and get them redone after a while because they start sagging and looking bad. Annoying slash pranking people for viral videos. If the prank is harmless and people all get along with it, sure. But if you're purposefully harassing people in public as a prank, uh, die? <laughs> Collecting Funko Pops. Look, I get it. I get it. They might go up in value in the future, but hear me out. They're kind of gross. <laughs> Credit card debt. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd never, I'd never do that. Oh. <laughs> Chatting with AI characters. League of Legends. You are stronger than most. What annoys the F out of you? Trash less than two feet from trash can. When you see that, you know it was a deliberate choice. Fake X on ads. It makes me lose my mind when it is an actual X, but then it just opens a second ad for you anyways. <clears throat> people who get on the train before allowing people off. I will stand in your way until you get out of my way so I can get off the effing train. Obnoxiously bright headlights. Look, I get it. For you, maybe you can see, but for me, I'm blind in every single mirror. People who still try to act like a high school bully well into adulthood. Drivers who pull out in front of you on the road when they clearly didn't have enough time. It might be like a panic response, but I cannot stand it when they do this and then they just stop. Like, almost guaranteeing a crash. Speakerphone conversation slash tick TikTok videos on public transport. Just never do it. If you're in public, headphones only. When I just put on fresh socks and then step on a drop of water. People who get off an escalator that stop and look around. Totally okay to stop and look around because you don't know where you're going, but get out of the way. People who get in their cars but then take ages to drive away. What are you doing in there? Replying to the, could you get ice cream text my wife sent after I already checked out. Pre-flight checks. This is a really fun way of describing it. I, I think I think I'm going to use this from now on. Having an existential crisis in a Walmart
our parking lot. Who doesn't, honestly? I have to turn the stereo on and off 16 times or the world will end. People with kids getting some me time. You know, my roommate does that too. He just sits in his car once he gets home. I should probably talk with him. Enjoying my prime parking spot just a little longer. What is something people describe as healthy, but it's actually unhealthy? Juice cleanses. No fiber or anything. Just straight up sugar water. Being yourself. Even when you are an a-hole and your actions adversely affect others, people have stopped being considerate and kind. The belief that if a product contains no man-made chemicals, it must be healthy. Arsenic, cyanide, and a multitude of other substances are natural and yet can kill you. Detox slash cleanse regimens. Having perfectly white teeth. It's not a sign of healthy, but scrubbed, chemically treated, or outright sanded teeth. Fat-free. This term usually hides the fact that it's fattening. Overusing antibiotics. How do you overuse antibiotics unless you're doing some nefarious acts and stealing from the doctor? Complaining about every possible thing and calling it venting. Just sounds sus to me. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I said that. What is something you deeply regret doing as a child that still affects you to this day? Uh, probably not talking about my feelings a lot. Ah, I'm probably fine. Being so mean to my younger sister in our childhood. I often wonder how much I contributed to her current mental health struggles. It eats me alive some days. In middle school, I jumped from the top of a slide and landed flat on the bottom, hurting my back. Pretty sure I've never recovered. Falling into the trap of, if I don't ask for too much, maybe I can get what I need. Oh, that one hurts. I, I feel you there. Giving my knees floor burn for fun. I don't have a clue why I thought it was fun. Now they are in an awful state and completely covered in scars. Well, yeah, you were just scraping your skin off. Not applying myself more in my studying in high school. Ignoring my dad all the times he'd try to teach me things like car maintenance, home repair, etc. Before I stopped speaking to him. What is the best response to what the F is your problem? Like right now or just in general? Take a deep breath, thank them for their concern and actually start talking about your problems. All of them. Think of it like free therapy. If they try to flee from you, don't worry. They're just trying to help you with some added exercise therapy. Just give chase and continue to shout your problems at them until you have them cornered and finish or you feel better. Thank them again and go about your day as the happier, less burdened individual. How much time do you have? I had two co-workers do this to me today. I responded with, at the moment, you two. Break down crying. It's a power move and relieves stress. Usually it's a-holes. Best response is to say, oh, didn't I tell you? When they say no, respond with, then it must not be any of your business. Hemorrhoids, that'll shut them up real quick. If someone offered you a box of everything you ever lost, what would you look for first? Oh god, I mean, half the things I've lost, I've forgotten about, so I don't know. The issue is that I can't recall what I've lost. See, they get it. My nose. Like, WTF. Some guy stole it at my third birthday. Never got it back. My cat. Though he ran away 30 years ago. Mom's silver necklace that I, as a teen, gave to someone I thought I was close to, but wasn't. Never saw the person or the necklace again. If anything, it just sounds like you got robbed. I'm so sorry. The box I lost that had everything in it. As a guitarist, all of my effing picks. I always know where I put them, and then they just disappear. The time I spent on my ex. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. You're never getting that back. High school sketchbook full of emo, edgy drawings. I would want that for the nostalgia factor and then immediately burn it because I know nothing I made would be good enough to show people. I still think about the SpongeBob wallet with $20 in it I lost when I was eight. What's the best response to May the 4th be with you? I'm Orthodox. I celebrate on May 25th. I know. <laughs> Look, that's the best you're getting out of me, okay? I'm not Chewbacca. I love Star Trek too. <laughs> and also with you. I don't like Lord of the Rings that much. I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. Pretend you didn't hear them. This does end up leaving the other party a little bit uncomfortable, but it doesn't really matter because you're not paying attention to them. Frank Sinatra said, The best revenge is massive success. What's a real-life example of this? George Lucas got the ownership of the toy rights to Star Wars 
dollars because they don't think it would be successful. He made an absolute killing on these. The guy who invented ring cameras went on Shark Tank and was rejected by everyone. They all thought it would fail. Well, you know the rest. What were the sharks thinking? What, what they thought nobody would want home security cameras? Ron McNair had the police called on him when he was little because he was black and reading in a library. He grew up to be an astronaut and the library he was kicked out of was later named after him. Okay, now that is what I like to see. Yes, yes, yes. Brendan Fraser getting the Oscar this year after being blacklisted from Hollywood for over a decade for speaking out about being sexually assaulted. Jennifer Hudson lost American Idol and became more successful than the winner. When Lady Gaga was in college, some of her classmates had a Facebook group called Stephanie Germanata, You'll Never Be Famous. Pretty sure she proved them wrong. Just imagine being those classmates and having to live with the fact that you were so wrong, so hard. Harlan Ellison sent every writing award he received to one of his old professors that said he'd never be successful. Oh, it's just such a perfect way of rubbing their nose in it. Like, oh, this award? Yeah, I won it. It's mine. Blockbuster laughed baby Netflix out of the room with their idea. Then later, grown up Netflix killed Blockbuster. While I do enjoy the convenience of Netflix having movies just whenever, I miss going to Blockbuster and just aimlessly looking through the aisles. Which movie can be identified by a single quote? I am your father. Oh god, that's a tough one. Uh, there's a lot of movies with dads. I don't, oh. Hakuna Matata. I love Finding Nemo. God, it's so good. Who you gonna call? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember phone numbers. This is Sparta! No, this is Patrick. You're a wizard, Harry. Love it when Gandalf says that. Why so serious? Say hello to my little friend. Godfather, so good. Love that movie. Here's Johnny. Hot take here. You can cancel me if you want. The Shining is boring. What are some mysteries that have actually been solved? Bermuda Triangle turns out to have the expected number of mishaps at sea given the amount of shipping that traverses it. The bloop sound that was recorded in the Pacific Ocean that baffled scientists was finally found to be an ice quake. Oh, that one kind of sucks to learn. I thought it would be like a cool, undiscovered animal. How to make gold from lead. Hundreds of years, the alchemist tried it unsuccessfully. Today, it is possible using a particle accelerator. However, it is far from cost efficient. Mining gold is orders of magnitudes cheaper. Whether the Titanic sank in one piece or not, many discounted those survivors who said they saw her split in two because they had a hard time believing such a mighty ship could rip apart like that. It wasn't until Ballard and his crew found her that the truth was revealed. You know, mildly insane that people just didn't believe the survivors of a shipwreck that, oh yeah, the ship broke in half. We saw it with our eyes. Torosaurus was actually a mature Triceratops. Nanotyrannus was a baby T-Rex. Stigmalock and Dracorex are younger Pachycephalosaurus skeletons. Anatotitans was a grown-up Edmontosaurus, and I think there was a few others just because baby dinosaurs looked drastically different than adults. I'm gonna need the science and dinosaur community to make easier names. The mystery of Mary Toft. In 1726, a woman in England claimed to have given birth to rabbits. While it was believed to be a medical mystery at the time, it was later discovered that the rabbits had been inserted into her womb by a local surgeon. Ew! Wh like, why? For fame? Th why? Depressed people have read it. What are your hobbies that keep you sane? Washing dishes on a regular basis so I don't go insane from the sink clutter and blasting my favorite music so I remember how to be a human. Crocheting. It's repetitive, calming, creative, and you get the feeling of at least a bit of productivity. Reading fiction. Which kind of sounds counterproductive to sanity. So much guitar. Video games always helped me escape the depressing real world. Long walks and music. I recently started wood carving. It's calming and pretty fun. So far, I've made a little duck. Looking at the ceiling is just the best hobby. Especially if you do it for a solid six hours straight. What is the one thing you do each Monday morning that helps you get through the day? I put a fake meeting in my calendar for every Monday so nobody can book me in some BS meeting before noon so I can get through the thousand emails received since Friday. Oh my god, that actually sounds genius. Everybody write that down. That's actually useful. Only five more days. If you say it to yourself in the mirror 30 times, you'll maybe start to believe it. As a therapist, I make my own schedule. I intentionally don't 
schedule anything until the afternoon on Monday. I can relax a bit, get some paperwork done, and ease into the week. Drink a tall glass of water. I should probably start doing that. I am not, uh, healthy. Decide what the three most important things that must be done today are. Then focus only on those things. Brings a sense of accomplishment and eases an anxious, overwhelmed mind. Remind myself it's another day. Don't give up. Pour myself a cup of ambition. Is it followed by yawning and stretching and trying to come alive? What is the dumbest controversy of the last 10 years? Flat Earth crap. I thought people were just arguing for it for the memes till I met an actual Flat Earther. It is unfortunate that people do still believe that in our Lord's year of 2023. Changing the shoes of an animated M&M. Who cares what it's wearing? It's an advertisement for candy. The people who got bent out of shape about it are weird. Jade Helm. The idea that Obama was going to invade, conquer, and occupy Texas like it was France and turn it into part of his own personal empire and do it with just 1,200 troops. Oh my lord, I didn't know that these conspiracies went that far back. The COVID vaccine gives you 5G. That one is true. I, I've been getting really good reception in my brain recently. The blue gold dress. I still can't tell you if I just saw two different pictures that people kept editing or if I gaslit myself into believing I could see one or the other. Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. I think the dumbest part was when people actually showed up. No, the dumbest part is when other people didn't show up because then they could stop the small amount of people that did gather. Birds aren't real. Australia isn't real. COVID isn't real. Vaccine causes autism. The list is quite large. Okay, but admittedly, one of those is true. I still have yet to see Australia on a map. What was normal 20 to 30 years ago, but is considered a luxury now? New furniture made out of real wood. It always looks so nice. Why does it have to be expensive? Owning the software you purchased. I will never forgive Adobe for switching to a subscription service. Not being expected to be reachable 24-7. The amount of freedom there must have been so nice. Paying no more than 30% on your income and rent. I'm pretty sure I pay somewhere close to 70% of my income towards all of my bills and rent, so it's not going good right now. Concert ticket prices. It's a little ludicrous how some tickets will cost $300 for, what, three hours of a show? Retirement plan built into your job. See, corporations figured out if we make everyone part-time, we don't have to give anyone benefits. Getting things repaired instead of buying new. Privacy. I sort of understand what you mean, but you might also be the same person that thinks the government is spying specifically on you 24-7, which they're probably not. To you, Redditors aged 50 plus, what's something you genuinely believe young people haven't realized yet, but could enrich their lives or positively impact their outlook on life? Marriage slash relationship should be fun and happy. Life is hard. Things get tough. Find someone that makes the tough times easier, not harder. Not everything that you disagree with deserves an argument. Pick your battles and let trivial things slide. Unless you don't mind hearing like all the time, day and night. Use hearing protection in loud situations. Tinnitus is a bitch. If you die, your employer will have your job posted before you are buried. Remember that one when making work slash life choices. Everybody's effed up. It's what you do after that matters. Wear sunscreen. Ugh, you sound like my dang mom. Take care of your body. Exercise. Keep your weight reasonable. And keep the bad habits in moderation. It really does make a difference later in life. People who wake up at 5 a.m. daily. Why? My cat politely lays on my neck until I wake up. Do you think I'm doing this on purpose? I mean, I kinda did. I did. Calm down. My job is an hour away, and I still need about an hour to cry in the shower. Can't help it. I naturally wake up around then. I like it, TBH. Everyone else is mostly asleep, too, so it's a peaceful way to enjoy coffee and wake up at your pace. My gluttonous f- Cat. Interesting that it's around 5 a.m. Uh, our cats like to start screaming around 3. Dogs can't seem to understand. We sleep in on the weekends. Kids. Honestly, that's a perfect advertisement to not have them. What obvious thing did you recently realize? That men's warehouse is a pun. Oh, see, I don't see it at all. You should have explained how. That birds don't live in nests. Nests are just where they keep their eggs. Birds just sleep in trees. That they call it footage 
bridge because film is measured in feet. Oh my god, that makes like perfect sense actually. That there is a typo on my email in my resume. Somehow it went unnoticed for six plus months. That boxer shorts are the style of shorts that boxers wear. Feels pretty on the nose there, but yeah, good for you. Even after hitting rock bottom, you can still keep digging. Soft drinks are called soft drinks because they don't contain alcohol. Hard drinks do. I can actually do certain things differently than I've been doing my whole life. And often the new way is better. What is something people want to do that you think is actually incredibly stupid? Riding a motorcycle without leathers. A million things can happen so fast and there you are, sliding down the pavement leaving a meat schmear. Why'd you have to describe it as a meat schmear? That no! Buy that shiny, newer version of the thing you already have. Exploring those small, tight <laughs> caves. Extremely stupid. I'm slightly claustrophobic and I watch those videos just to induce fear. Forgiving people who are totally unapologetic, unchanging abusers. Nope. We can't judge these people because maybe they haven't fully realized what situation they're in. Doing dumb stuff for TikTok likes. Free solo climbing is incredibly stupid. I don't care how long you've been climbing. Climbing without ropes is incredibly stupid. Gender reveals. After all of the wildfires that have happened because of them, how have we not stopped yet? Climb Mount Everest. You know, plenty of other people have done it. I don't think I need to go up there. It's just it's just a big rock, right? What words slash phrases do you hear someone say and immediately know you're probably not going to like the person? People don't like me because I tell it like it is. Oh, so you're just a raging a-hole. Got it. If a person humiliates others for the sake of boosting his own ego, I immediately stop communicating with that person. We're a family here. In a work setting. Mother effer, you just laid off cousin Bill. I hate drama. I have never heard someone say this unsolicited and not be exhausted with their shenanigans within a day. You're so quiet. Oh yeah, because I didn't have anything to say? Where's my hug? Immediately no. I don't know what you call that kind of behavior other than generally manipulative and creepy. Oh, I'm compelled to do this totally normal activity because my OCD slash ADHD slash bipolar is kicking in. Mental disorders are not a personality. Oh, that's such typical star sign behavior. I don't know. I kind of think astrology stuff is just fun and goofy. Like, I, I don't take it too seriously, so it's just funny. What is the best insult response you've ever heard? My dad always tells people, I'm not as dumb as I look. He said this to someone in passing one day who replied, no one could possibly be that dumb. To this day tells me it was such a sick burn he was left speechless. My teacher once told a kid who kept adding the silliest comments to the discourse, you make it really difficult to underestimate you. The man mistook that for a compliment because he didn't understand what it meant. My ex-mother-in-law was once having a go at me and said, you used to be a nice person. I snapped back with, well at least I was once. Still proud of that. You truly are the top of the bell curve. My brother and I were getting driven home from school by our aunt. My brother was in second grade at the time and asked my aunt, How do women get gray hairs? She said, Men. Men give you gray hairs. To which he said, You must know a lot of men. Oh my god! Didn't have to murder your aunt that way. J jeez! Knowledge is chasing you. But you've always been faster. Me. True story. Guy at a bar says, You look better without your glasses. Me. You look better without my glasses too. Why aren't you dating anybody right now. In my case, it's because I'm terrified of talking to people. Dating me is one of the worst versions of me. In this economy? You know, they have a point. Because, after all years and evidence, I am just not cut out for relationships deeper than acquaintance level. If you had met my ex, you wouldn't ask. My wife won't let me. Aw, boo-hoo, wah. Because people. What a bunch of ba- a relationship just seems like it takes more than it gives. The closet is warm and comfortable. You will have to leave at some point, but only once you're good and ready. Take your time. People who used to claim your eye color changed with your mood. How are you doing in life? Really bad, chief. Turns out I'm not special at all. F you. Why did you remind me? I like my repressed memories right where they are, thank you very much. Kinda blue, TBH. Pretty great, thanks. Not a furry, thank God. But I certainly was teetering on the edge. 
change. I don't think those correlate, but good for you. It's a pain having to change contacts all the time, but better than admitting I was wrong. Mine still turn gray when I'm in a storm on the sea. That might just be because of reflections. Never mind. You're, yeah, stuck with a license that has the incorrect eye color for me listed. What's a company secret you can share now that you don't work there? Health insurance, dude. When you file a claim, it is often denied because they're counting on you not escalating it. Once you do, your case goes to a medical management group, which ought to be called the we don't want to pay group. Keep escalating and involve your doctor. Fight for the insurance you pay for. Oh, so fun that you pay for a service that actively tries to not do anything for you. Mortgage industry here. We're like cops. Only answer the question asked. Do not provide additional information to be helpful. It could screw you over. I worked at L'Oreal. The cosmetics from L'Oreal and Lancome are practically the same, but Lancome costs like 20 bucks more. T-Mobile has two coverage maps. The one they show customers and the real one that is internal shows the actual coverage. Diminishes by about 50%. Their coverage is built on a bed of lies. You know, that does make some sense because I should be having really good coverage, but it's spotty at best. Diet Sprite and Sprite Zero were the exact same thing. They didn't change the recipe one bit. They just changed the name and design. In a broadband company I worked for, I was tasked with editing thousands of complaints to avoid huge OFCOM fines. I love a little bit of fraud in my corporate work. I was the one who did an undercover news story about Scamp's pet stores and their affiliation with Puppy Mills. Please don't buy from pet stores, folks. What's a harsh reality that everybody needs to hear? Most people should not be on social media of any kind because they cannot handle what it does to them mentally. It is not about socialization, it's about corporations monetizing your life. Whatever you say can and will be used against you. It's annoying when police tell it to you, but it is true. Some people will hurt you, and they won't care how you feel about it. It sucks, but it is true. You gotta walk your dogs. Yes, I know. Can you get off my back, please? Life is not automatically easier just because you're a good person. More often than not, I think it makes life harder, just speaking from experience. You can love someone with all of your heart and not be loved back in the same way. Celebrities and influencers need us more than we need them. It is true. If all of you went away, I would shrivel up and disappear. Please don't leave me. Just because someone is your family doesn't mean they have your best interests at heart. What currently legal thing do you expect to be illegal in the next 20 years? Uh, my ability to get married, but that's a eh, hypothetical kind of. Charities spending less than 5% of the money they are donated to the cause due to big overheads. Data privacy violations. Hopefully. We can only hope, but just because something's illegal doesn't mean it stops happening, unfortunately. Hopefully those family vlog channels on YouTube. I'm just not excited to see like the fallout of what happens to those children that have had cameras shoved in their face since the day they existed. Child marriage. Yep, no, I did in fact read that right, and it's crazy that it is technically legal. Telemarketing. God, please ban telemarketing. People who do telemarketing don't even like telemarketing. Subscription services for certain product features. It's ridiculous that one requires a subservice to use the key fob for his slash her car. <coughs> BMW. <laughs> Companies buying single family homes, hopefully. Now, if it was a company buying single family homes and selling them for pennies, then it would be fine. But no, they have to sell it for over $300,000 million. If you could place an object on the surface of Mars purely to confuse NASA scientists, what would it be? Around $200,000, a parachute, and the body of D.B. Cooper. A NASA spacecraft, one that NASA has no record of, like something they've never built, but that has NASA logo all over it and clearly has a NASA origin, just not our NASA. The missing pieces of the Rosetta Stone. Are you saying you have the missing pieces of the Rosetta Stone? H historians want to talk to you real quick. A big map of Earth with several points of interest marked on it. They don't actually have to be interesting points, just any dots on a map. That, that'd confuse people. A white plastic lawn chair. It can't just be a white lawn chair. You have to have a cooler with some beer in it so you know somebody's chilling up there. Simple. Velociraptor skeletons in a space shuttle. A small sign saying, caution, uneven surface. Wacky inflatable tube man on the highest peak. What did the pandemic ruin more than we realize? We lost a Halloween that was on a Friday with a blue moon. We ain't getting that back ever. This might just be local, but where I live, a ton of businesses closed. I mean, half of them were closed. Not just because of the 
shut down, they were closed permanently. It's not just a local thing. That happened almost everywhere. The health system is wrecked. Way too many nurses got burnt out and left the profession. Independent slash smaller slash DIY music venues never really recovered, which is one of the bigger tragedies, I'd say, but then again, I'm a loser, so I don't know. People's driving is so out of whack. My only concern is to make it home in one piece. I don't even want to think about how many people actively went to get their driver's license during COVID because so many people didn't actually learn. The cost of living is pretty effed. Well, it's always kind of been like that. It's definitely worse, though. Night shift people lives. Nothing is ever open late anymore. I'd say that has something to do with a lot of businesses cutting their staff. What's the dumbest mistake you've seen an incompetent co-worker make? At a Petco, all the guinea pigs were in a big plexiglass enclosure with a center divider. Boys on one side and girls on the other. An employee decided that all the long-haired guinea pigs should be on one side and short-haired on the other. It took forever to sort them out and all the females were pregnant. Oh, that is such an unfortunate blunder. I, like, I see where they were going with it, but oh no. One of my co-workers took an order to feed 150 people and told them two platters of sandwiches would do. Each platter is five sandwiches cut into three bits. So, at best, they'd have 30 pieces of sandwiches to feed 150 people. He doubled down and everything and had days to figure it out. If I'm being honest, I think he was just being lazy and didn't want to actually feed everyone. The designer, creative director, and head of production all missed that there was an eight-day week on a schedule. We sent 10,000 copies of a useless calendar to a client. Rightly so, they refused to pay for it. That kind of really hurts knowing that there were so many calendars made and they're just instantly trashed. When I worked construction, there was a guy who showed up with nothing in his tool belt except a small bag of peanuts in one pocket. He didn't stay around too long. Oh, I wonder why. Tried to retrieve his lighter from a deep fat fryer with his hands. Boy, that was fun to clean up. Oh my god, like, first off, hand ruined forever. Second, how did the lighter not explode? Third, ah! I used to work for a landscaping company, and over the course of a summer, I witnessed one of my coworkers accidentally set three different things on fire. A hedge trimmer, a truck, and himself. Took the wrong coffin to a funeral. Someone else had to drive to the cemetery with the correct deceased on board, and thankfully they made it before the viewing. Oh, at least that kind of went off without a hitch. Could have been really bad. What unimpressive things are people idiotically proud of? Missing breaks at work for a company that wouldn't care if they died the next day. The best you can do is try to tell them that they're being exploited, but if they still don't hear it, I, I guess let them get exploited. How much money their parents make. When people try and tell me how much money their parents make, I'm like, okay, is it yours? No? Okay, why do I care? Not eating any vegetables. Known a few people stated as if it's some kind of achievement, giving themselves constipation. Drinking a lot. It's not something you should really brag about. I once had a coworker brag about how dark his pee is. Yeah, that's something you really don't want to brag about. Saying stuff like, in a land of sheep, I am the wolf. Sure thing, dude. Nothing surprises me more than when people are proud of their ignorance. What's the worst part of having a child? Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this question. It's incessant. It never stops. You never get a day off. Going from having two days per week to relax and do whatever to literally never having a moment free from responsibility. Like, why would you do it to yourself, you know? Like, I, I just don't get it. The weight gain. During the pregnancy, I gained 35 pounds. My belly has stretch marks. My boobs are all saggy. And it's not even fair because my wife only gained like 15. It is a little rough, but you'll hang in there, Dad. The constant anxiety that you're doing enough to shape them to make good choices, a good life, be a good person, and for them to have the life they deserve. The days drag on, but the years fly by. You have to feed them, like, every day. Yeah, I have to do the same thing with my dog, and it's not the worst thing to do. Watching them make the same mistakes you did, even though you told them not to make those mistakes. Little Jimmy, if you borrow a bunch of money, those people are gonna want it back. And if they don't get it back, they'll take stuff you won't want taken. They're just always there, on you, behind you, in front of you. Just a little speed bump impeding every task, lol. What's a modern day poison people willingly ingest? You know that cotton candy blue raz vape you just got? Yeah, that's it. Personally, I'm horrendously addicted to nicotine and it's probably killing me. No, no, not probably, it is. I am also in this boat, but I wish I were off of it. Those shorts videos that now are almost
almost in every platform. If you have problems with focus and getting things done, then you know that if you keep watching them, you might end up in the next day without even realizing you haven't done anything yet. It's such a dangerous game whenever I start watching some YouTube shorts because I just keep scrolling. I can't stop. 24 hour news cycle. It does do the mind good to take a day off from really checking the news. Social media. As a lot of people have said, go touch grass. It's actually a helpful tip. Energy drinks. I mean, I know all the chemicals in there are probably going to kill me, but I need this energy now. 